All right. I think we're going to get started. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I see the participant numbers just climbing up every second here. We're nearly at 600 people. Uh, it's really amazing to see so many people from different pe different places. Uh, it's 9 a.m. here in San Francisco. I saw some people from Sri Lanka, from India, uh, from Prague, um, Croatia. So it's a really international crowd. So again, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, just want to point you to a few things today. Um, one is we had we do have some Q and A at the very end, and if you have any questions, uh, a lot of us are hanging out um, in the chat as well as uh, monitoring the Q and A. So feel please feel free to just send us questions, and we'll get to them at the very end. Um, and other than that, we'll get started. So today we're going to talk about what's new in Figma, um, but before we get started. Uh, it would be fun to introduce you to uh, the set of people who are here today to tell you a little bit about Figma. Um, and uh, in particular, we brought the PM team together today to show you what's new. Um, so we'll do a little quick round of intros and then get right into it. So I'm Yuki, I lead the product team here. Um, I've been at Figma for a little over a year. I was at uh, Uber and YouTube prior. And I was at Uber when I uh, started using Figma and really fell in love with it. Um, I also think it might be fun for all of us to share kind of our favorite Figma features or shortcuts. Uh, so I'll share mine. Uh, one I recently learned is uh, Alt or Option Double Click. Um, and that lets you, uh, when you do that on an image, it lets you get into the crop mode really quickly. And I'm always making decks and cropping stuff. So that's my favorite feature. All right, Kelsey, turning it over to you. Everyone, I'm Kelsey and I am the PM for prototyping. I actually just joined Figma about two, a little over two months ago, so I'm pretty new. Um, I spent about five years before that at Netflix, um, where I actually started as a designer and then turned into a PM um, while I was there. And so I'm super excited to be working um, on a design tool. And uh, my favorite keyboard shortcut that I just discovered is Alt L lets you collapse all of your layers at once, which feels really, really good to do. So that's fine. And Yuki, I'll hand it back to you. Uh, Megan. Uh, hey, Ron, my name is Megan. I'm the PM for collaboration here at Figma. I've been at Figma for a little under a year and a half. And before that, I was at Slack and Heroku. I, um, so my favorite Figma feature is this ability to pin files to projects. So when you're in a, in a project page, you can like select the files that you want your team to have ac ready access to and just stick it to the top of the page so everyone can find it easily. Okay. Pass it on to Bedrul. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Bedrul. I'm the uh, product manager for community. Uh, I've been at Figma for almost four years now. So it's been, it's been really exciting to see the community grow and the product become uh, better and better every day. Uh, my uh, favorite, shortcut is uh, holding command when you resize a frame. Uh, so it ignores all the constraint settings that you have uh, because you made that frame just a couple of pixels too big. Uh, so that's my favorite. Um, uh, back to you, Yuki. The jewel likes to ignore constraints all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Um, so in terms of today's agenda, uh, we're going to talk about uh, our investments in these three themes. So as many of you may remember from config back in February, uh, where we're focusing this year falls in three different pillars. The first one is creation here. Um, and this one's really about continuing to ship innovating, innovative features that really boost creativity um, and remove the manual repetitive parts of design work. So in 2020, we're working on updates that mean fewer clicks to get things done and more time to make. The second product theme is collaboration. Um, and as all of you know, um, great products aren't built alone. And that working well with the broader product team is critical to shipping products your customers will love. So this year we'll be focusing on updates that make it easier to share, communicate with your team and get feedback from the developers and stakeholders who work closely with day in and day out. And then the last pillar is community. We want to provide an avenue for you to share all the great work that you're creating as a team with others. And the design community is opening up with a willingness to share with and learn from each other. And we're gonna continue to support this open exchange of ideas and resources in 2020 with further investment in this community. 
So today, uh, our team wants to share with you what we've shipped since, since config, in case you missed the news. And then at the very end, we'll highlight some of the few problems that we're currently working on solving for the future. So with that, I'm going to first turn it over to Kelsey, who's going to walk us through creation. And I'm going to go ahead and observe her. And there we are. Cool. Hi again, everyone. Um, I'm going to walk through some updates in the creation space. Uh, we know you spend a ton of time designing in Figma. And as such, we want the editor and prototyping experience to work as fast as you do, so you can always stay in flow. And over the past couple months, we've continued to build and iterate on features to help speed up the creation process and the editor and get your prototypes in front of more users sooner. Well, so today I want to introduce to you a few features we recently shipped in the last couple months and one that we're actually shipping today. Uh, so an update to selection colors, which makes updating colors a breeze, support for new prototyping interactions, and a new, new ways to customize and control how you share and present your prototypes. Cool. So to kick things off, selection colors got new tricks. So we launched selection colors at config a few months ago. And just as a reminder, selection colors enables you to batch update colors across fills, strokes, and text. And since then, we've released two pretty nifty updates to the feature. Um, first off, when you hover over a color, you'll now see this little target icon, which lets you select a color's matching objects and make adjustments to just those objects. So if you have a bunch of shapes with a black stroke, you could use this feature to select all objects that have black in them and then change their stroke width. And second is when you open the styles flyout, you can now hit the plus icon next to the color styles to quickly upgrade a color to a named style. So in an ideal world, you'll define all your color styles up front before you start designing, but the reality is usually a little messier. So this feature makes it easier to upgrade the colors that you do end up using to styles throughout your design process. Now moving into the world of prototyping. Uh, so to help you create higher fidelity prototypes, We've added support for prototype interactions, which are triggered by keyboards, game pads, and accessibility controllers. So with these new triggers, you can prototype interactivity based on keyboard keys. So you could wire up the escape key to exit a screen. Um, you could also use multiple keys as a trigger. So you could set up something so that command F opens up a search spotlight in your app. And you can even prototype things like video game menus that use gamepad controllers as directional buttons, like you see in this GIF here. Um, we've already seen some really cool use cases with this feature, so we're super excited to see what you all do with it. Next up, uh, we've made it easier to share your prototypes safely. So sharing your design work is key to communicating your ideas and getting buy-in and feedback on your designs. And when you share a prototype with someone, you shouldn't have to share the underlying file as well. And to give you finer tuned control over your permissions, we've added an access option for viewing prototypes only. If you're part of a pro or org account, when you open the share modal, you can now grant individuals access to prototypes only, or even set link access to prototypes only. This means that you could, for example, give another designer on your team edit access to collaborate on a design, but grant your client access to just the prototypes. And this helps protect your work, but also helps reduce confusion by only giving people access to what they really need. And last but not least, today we're launching the ability to turn off the Figma toolbar and footer and presentation mode. So today, when you hover over the top few pixels of a prototype, the Figma toolbar and footer are both triggered. Uh, and we've heard lots of feedback from all of you about how this can be distracting or even confusing for folks who are interacting with your prototypes. And especially so in user testing settings, where people might not be familiar with Figma at all. So we've tidied up the prototype controls into a single options menu 
which now has an option to disable the Figma toolbar and footer. And when you click it, the toolbar goes away and a query param gets added to the URL, which means that if you share this link, um, the link to your prototype with this setting on, the recipients won't be distracted by the Figma toolbar. Uh, and you can use the keyboard shortcuts command backslash and command period to toggle the visibility of the Figma UI and these match the shortcuts that you use in the editor to do the same thing. And also the setting will be respected in embeds. So we're super excited to hear your feedback on this new feature. And now I will hand it off to Megan to go through updates in the collaboration space. Cool. Thanks, Kelsey. So along with helping you create faster, we know that a lot of you do, a lot of the work you do in Figma is in collaboration with the broader product team. In fact, we know that about 30% of our Figma users are actually developers. So we want to take those users into account. Um, this, since I config, we've launched a number of features in this area, including first the ability to search all of Figma. We've also allowed you to add links to your Figma files so that you can help users navigate your content more easily and get all of the context they need. And lastly, we've worked with a bunch of partners to make your design workflow more seamless. So let's dig into each of these. So last fall, we launched profiles and refreshed our team and project pages. This spring, we've completed that story and taken it full circle. Now people can search for uh, teams, files, users, all in Figma to help you get more context from what your colleagues are working on and get access to designs from across your organization. We also know that for most projects, designs are only part of the story. That's why we've released links. This will enable you to link to external product documentation so that your teams have full context behind uh, you know, the, what's motivating your design work and they can be um, more effective collaborators with you. Uh, you can use this feature pretty uh, seamlessly in the editor just by selecting a text. Um, selecting text, you'll see at the top bar the ability to add a link to any text that you've seen that you're using in your file. And lastly, uh, we've recently relaun relaunched our Zeppelin integration to make uh, handoff in Zeppelin much easier. So you, this, in this integration, you can now select a bunch of different frames with, very easily and then uh, click to do immediately hang off, uh, immediately sort of hand off these frames into Zeppelin. Additionally, you can please check out our integrations with Maze and Framer, which will help bring more advanced prototyping and user testing capabilities to your Figma designs. With that, I'd like to hand it off to Madrol. Everyone. Um, uh, so I wanted to talk briefly about uh, community. Uh, so for community, we uh, we actually started uh, opening up the community last August when we started uh, when we launched uh, plugins to everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to see that uh, we have more than 540 plugins uh, today, and uh, every day I'm I'm so impressed and so amazed by our developer community and what you've been able to build uh, in Figma. Uh, so I wanted to walk you through a few of those today, a few of my favorite plugins today. Um, the first one is uh, this timer plugin. Uh, and this, this is really useful and really helpful when you're uh, brainstorming with your team online, when you're doing crits and you want to focus the feedback within a certain amount of time, you can create a text box and simply create a timer directly on the canvas to kind of guide everyone through an exercise. Um, another plugin that's really amazing is uh, this is plugin called uh, the filter plugin. It allows you to take any image and edit it uh, in a lot more detail than you could today in Figma. Uh, in terms of how many features we provide. And it's really amazing to help all of your imagery really stand out and look the way you want it to look in your UI. Um, the, the last plugin I want to share is, is this plugin by Lottie Files. Uh, and uh, animation is always really exciting and this helps you bring in some of those animations into Figma and helps you customize those uh, uh, animations inside the plugin itself. That's really amazing. Uh, but we know that uh, plugins are just one type of community resource. Uh, we wanted to enable access to everyone. Uh, so last October, we started a beta where you could share files uh, with everyone else in the community. And uh, we've been blown away by the response uh, so far. We have more than uh, 1,200 files. Uh, we have more than 1,800 files already today. More than 1,200 creators are in the beta sharing uh, their, what, what they're making, what they're designing. Uh, and I wanted to share a few of these creations as well. Um, the first one is uh, by Spotify. Uh, uh, what they did is they published uh, a, a Figma file that shows how they work in Figma 
and how their team collaborates with each other, collaborates with other uh, uh, partners in their company. Uh, there's another file by Mixpanel, which is an annotation kit. Uh, it can help you quickly ramp up and uh, work together with uh, the rest of your team. This pairs really well with the timer plugin. You can do brainstorming exercises really well. Uh, and then lastly, this is one of the coolest things I've seen. This is uh, Settlers of Catan. Uh, it uses two different plugins, one of which rolls the dice. There's one that uh, you can use to reveal cards only for yourself. And then you can use a Figma file to play uh, Catan together. So if you, if you want to ruin your friendships with people, you can compete with them by playing this game in Figma. Uh, and then finally, uh, this is still a beta. We're still uh, learning and trying to respond as fast as we can to all the feedback we've been receiving. Uh, we, made, we recently uh, made it easier to view multiple pages and embeds when you view one of these files. Uh, file thumbnails are a lot easier to use and curate now. Uh, and uh, we're, we're always investing in ways to give creators feedback, either through uh, duplicates or likes and things like that. Uh, so that, that's all for community right now. I'm going to hand it back to Yuki. Cool. Thanks, Bajor, Kelsey, Megan. Um, and so just to wrap up, what we just saw was the stuff that we've been working on since config and launched. Um, and what I'm about to tell, show you is what we're working on uh, for beyond that in the future. So I want to give you an inside look into our work in progress and open up our design process a little bit. And while we can't promise if and when we'll ship these features, we wanted to share some of the problems we're hoping to solve so Figma continues to work better and better for you. So the first problem is a, is a small problem, um, but a significant one for many of you, which is bringing Figma into other tools that you use. So at Figma, we don't necessarily believe that the end goal is to have everyone and anyone inside the Figma file. Rather, we want to be useful regardless of the workflow that you have. Um, and so today, some of the behaviors we see is people resort to things like screenshots, exporting. Um, and while we have embeds, you do have to set the permission of that embed to anyone with the link can view. Um, so with this particular one, I'm happy to announce that next week we are shipping a solution. And so with our pro and organization plans, we're going to have private embeds. And so what that means is that you can uh, have an embed. It can with, be with whatever permissions you choose. Um, and only those who have the permission to view it will, will be able to view it and it'll just work. Um, as long as people are logged in and if they're not, we'll, we'll prompt you within the embed to do so. Uh, so uh, we'll make this available soon in Notion, Coda, Dropbox Paper, Jira, Trello, Airtable, Storybook, Zero Height, and more. Uh, so we're really excited for this in terms of how uh, we'll be embedded in more uh, workflows so that uh, people can find the Figma files where they need, uh, where they are. The second problem that we're working on is just managing and consuming large libraries. So we look at screenshots like these that we get, um, and it's a helpful reminder of how sophisticated design systems are becoming. Um, and so this particular screenshot is of an instant swap, um, and they've taken this, this user has taken advantage of the way we can let you structure some of this. But ne ne nevertheless, you can see how overwhelming it might be for someone consuming uh, the component to try to figure out which component to use in the first place, right? So, you know, many teams have these unnecessarily expansive libraries. They're difficult to manage, update, and sort through. So this is a problem we absolutely want to solve. Um, and we've been talking with many of you to figure out what the best solution is. We feel pretty good about some of the approaches we're taking, um, but we hope to be able to talk a little bit more about this in the coming months. The next problem we're solving is being able to build sophisticated prototypes. So this is another one of those screenshots. And in fact, internally, uh, one of our designers, Nico, who's a designer of prototype, prototyping, um, started a Slack channel called Pasta Pictures. And uh, these connections, we call them internally noodles. And whenever we see a screenshot in the wild where the noodles are crazy, uh, we post it to Pasta Pictures. And this is definitely one of them. But this really speaks to this idea that for some of the more sophisticated interactions, there's a lot of setup that you need to do. Uh, so just as an example, if you wanted to create a card that allows you to swipe both left and right, you create a lot of invisible frames to enable that. Uh, there's a lot of repetitive stuff that's happening and that's expressed in this prototype uh, because of some of the limitations that we have. So this is another problem area that we really want to be better in. Um, and we're working on a solution here too uh, to make just some of these more sophisticated prototypes 
uh, showcasing a lot of these multiple interactions much easier. So again, this is another one we'll be excited to share uh, in the coming months, but just wanted to let you know that we're working on this. Uh, the next problem is more on the pro and org side, um, and it's really about administering uh, Figma. And so one of the wonderful things we've seen is Figma take off in a lot of uh, teams and companies, uh, but as, this, as that has happened, it has become a little bit time consuming to manage all the members uh, and you know, managing access and cost, and some of the quotes you see there uh, around kind of support, supporting Figma using, users being one of the most time consuming focuses of, of, of some administrators' days. Uh, so this is a problem that we're taking really seriously. Um, and again, here too, uh, in the coming months, we hope that we can give you an update on uh, how we're making things better here. And then lastly, uh, Bajul alluded to some of this, but our community has been in beta and we've seen a lot of wonderful things happen. Uh, more than 1,200 creators publishing files and plugins every day. Um, but some of the basic problems we still have is that it's difficult to search across this work, find what you're looking for, uh, find the creators that you want to, uh, you know, you want to keep up to date with. So over the course of the next few months, we're going to be making updates here. One particular one uh, is being able to follow uh, your favorite creators. Um, and there's a lot more in this realm of browsing and discovery that we're going to be investing in as well. So uh, that was a preview of some of the big problems that we're focusing on, uh, as well as a recap of what we've uh, shipped since config. Uh, and now I'd like to open it up to Q&A. And as a reminder, there is a Q&A uh, feature within uh, this webinar. And please feel free to post it. And uh, we'll be, we'll be answering, taking this time now to answer it. Um, and also, a bunch of people on, in the Figma team are in the, in the chat as well. Uh, and we'll be fielding some of your questions there. All right, I'm going to jump in and ask you guys some of the questions we're seeing um, in the Q&A. Uh, I think first question is for Megan. We had a question about why would someone want to be use Zeppelin if there's the code panel? Yeah, that's a great question. So we see a lot of different kinds of teams have different uh, processes around dev handoff. Some teams are more are comfortable with the code panel in Figma, while others, um, you know, there might be some preferences on the developer side where they want to continue to use Zeppelin even if the team has moved to Figma. So it's it's all about just supporting um, as many customers as we can and the all the you know, unique workflows that each company uh, brings to bear. Cool. Um, question, real quick question for Jarrell. Someone asked how to how do they join the Figma beta community. Um, well, I guess I could probably answer that. We'll send a follow up in the email recording with the link to sign up. <laughs> Sounds great. Awesome. Um, question probably for the group. Um, any um, hints or things you can talk about in terms of what's next for auto layout? Um, I can take that one. We're definitely thinking through what's next for auto layout. Um, as you remember in config, uh, we We've shipped the ability to stretch. Um, and since then, you know, people have come to us with a bunch more feature requests around how to make this even more powerful. So we've been sifting through a lot of these. Um, it is something that the team is working on, um, but we're still kind of in the early stages of that. Um, so that's another one where in the coming months, hopefully we'll be give, able to give you an update as well. But we realize you know, our goal is to be able to support you know, the majority of the dynamic layouts that people are wanting to create. Um, so absolutely something that we're, we're working on. Cool. Um, a question for Kelsey, are there any plans to introduce voice prototyping? Uh, we don't have any current plans, but it is something internally that, we, that we've played around with a bit. Um, it's not currently on our roadmap, but we have some folks internally who, are, um, who have Played around with it a bit, so it's definitely on our mind, um, and it'd be really cool to be able to support it in the future. Awesome. Uh, for Megan, question for private embeds: um, How does access control work? Do the viewers need a Figma account? Um, so, just kind of a question around like just the permissions and viewability. Totally. Yeah. So, our private embed feature is really focused on making sure that all members of the product team, be they the developers, product managers. Um, don't necessarily have to go into Figma to get the context they need around design work in Figma. So with that, um, 
like lens on the problem, what we've done is allowed you to embed uh, private content on any other site. But in order to access it, you do need to have a Figma account. And you do need that Figma account to um, have permission to that file in Figma. So yes, it's, it does require that, um, that authorization right now. Cool, awesome. Um, all right, I'm going through a lot of the Q&As. It keeps jumping up and down because there's so many. Um, any, any updates on new Figma APIs or investments in that arena? Um, I don't know if there's anyone in the group that can take this one, but uh, the basic answer to this is we've definitely been taking a, um, you know, keeping a pulse on our plugins uh, community and talking to a lot of developers that are uh, building plugins. And as part of this has been just like building, incrementally building more abilities. Um, in, a, in addition, as we build new features, one of the things we're, we're trying to be careful to do is to make sure that those changes are reflected in those APIs as well. Um, so those are some of the big, bigger investments that we're making on the plugins front. Um, but if there are specific ones that uh, you're interested in seeing, uh, we'd love to hear about them. Cool. Um... I'm going to ask this one for Megan because I know you've been thinking a little bit about this around um, improvements in comment management. Maybe just a little um, kind of peek inside your brain of like how um, you and the team have been thinking about um, next steps for this. Yeah, for sure. So this is a great question and one that we think um, we've been thinking really carefully about. I think that you know there are uh, over the next several months. Please expect to see some you know improvements within the comments area. Um, we're thinking a lot about how people um, consume comments on the list. So right now we know that some of the feedback we've received is that the comment list, all of the comments tend to blend together visually. And so we're thinking more about ways to make that um, more uh, consumable when you just can scan the list and you get the key uh, pieces of information about, about each comment um, more easily. And in addition to that, we're thinking about ways to make commenting a little bit more accessible and um, more integrated into the editing experience. But, uh, much more to come the next several months of in 2020 we expect to make some changes here cool um awesome will we ever consider um working and introducing dark mode i had to ask this there was 10 of us there's 10 questions about this <laughs> it is something that we hear about all the time uh, and we know it's one of those top feature requests so uh you know Earlier, and at some point, some people on the team have pr prototyped some versions of this. There are a lot of details to work out there. Um, it is definitely on our list. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Good. Good answer. Um, all right. So I know we're definitely running low on time today, and there's a ton of questions. Um, but what we tend to do is we follow up and answer any of these questions after the fact. So um, we will make sure to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, Yuki, thanks so much. Jerrell, Megan, Kelsey, um, thanks everyone for joining and thanks everyone for presenting. Those are all the questions we're gonna answer live today. All right, thanks everyone.